Ladies and gents, welcome to Five Cents Daily. I'm Anthony Spaniard, and today we have got a massive surprise for you. In studio with us, we have got the New York Times bestselling author of The 10X Rule, and if you're not first, you're last. And he's just written what is already an Amazon bestseller, and it hasn't even been released yet, officially. We'd like to welcome Mr. Grant Cardone to Five Cents Daily. Mr. Cardone, Grant, thank you very much for being on the show with us today. Hey, thank you so much. I'm a big fan of Five Cents Daily. Thank you very much. And, and Johannesburg. I, some, of, some of my closest friends are from uh, from your part of the world, my friend. Really? Yeah. Have you uh, have you managed to have you managed to have a trip down to South Africa? Or I, I have not. I have Germany? not. Uh, a couple of the best salespeople I have ever met in my entire life. Uh, one of them yeah. is from uh, her name's Shar, and she is from uh, Cape Town. Yeah, and she is one of the best. She 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 ra- raises funds for uh, non charitable. She's a fundraiser. And she's single-handedly one of the best salespeople I've ever met in my entire life. Yeah, man. Well, we're, I really appreciate the compliment. Yeah. Guys, if you're listening and you're from South Africa, that was a massive compliment to all you essays. No, from, no. Uh, I'm, I, I'm, I'm, totally, I'm totally convinced that, it, that it's about her, uh, her upbringing and her origins and, and South Africa, not just her. Thank you. That's really awesome to hear. Yeah. I'm going to use that, by the way, just uh, just uh, just so you know. <laughs> That's fantastic. So let's start off with, with asking your first question. Um, Grant, firstly, what do you like to be called? I know you've got a lot of names. Uh, you go by Mr. Cardone, Grant, GC, uh, Uncle G. Hey, people call me, you know, call me whatever you want to call me. I just want to help people. So people call me, yeah. you know, Grant, GC, Uncle, people call me Uncle G because I, basically I, I was doing a stream one day and I just said, hey, I want to help people. I want to be that, when I, when I was a kid, when I was 10 and 12 years old, I wanted, my dad had just died and I wanted my uncles, not my aunts, mm-hmm. not my grandmother, I wanted my uncles to, to come. I literally, every day I'm thinking, man, I sure hope they take interest in me. Hope they come, yeah. you know, come get me. I kept waiting for my uncles to come get me. And I remember having this thought all the time. And then finally, I'm like, okay, they're not coming. You know, by the time you're 15, you're like, I hate these guys. But they, they, yeah. in all defense to them, they had their own lives going. They, they had their own situations. They had their own business. And, and looking back now, they had their kids, their life, et cetera. And I was just a, a lonely, angry kid that was like, you know, I want my uncle to come. And when, when I finally realized they weren't, I'm thinking one day I'm going to make it one day. I'm going to be somebody. And one day I'm going to be that uncle for other people that, 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 that I didn't have. So people call me uncle G cause I made this comment one day. And so some, some people call me uncle G and, and it kind of stuck. Well, well, isn't it amazing with, with today's modern technology, you know, people are able to look to you as a mentor on a daily basis. I mean, with all your shows you put out on Facebook, Facebook live, uh, Grant Cardone, uh, Mastering Objections, Grant Cardone University, Grant Cardone TV, with all of that access to you, people can basically have you as their coach on a daily basis. Is that yeah, right? Yeah, this is not like, you know, some of the guys that have, you know, because that uncle didn't show up, you know, I chose yeah. I chose to go grab books. And so all the guys, the the uh, Think and Grow Rich guy, what's his name? Napoleon, Napoleon Hill. Hill. All, all the old guys, right? That, that lived in the world of cassettes and Betamax, black and white. Most of it was done in black and white before color. Those guys became, because, of the, because they took the time and were generous enough yeah. to write down something in books, those became my mentors, okay? Those became people I could study and read, read about. But I could never, 30 years ago, you couldn't get close enough. Not, even, even five years ago, you could not access yeah. anyone, you couldn't really find out beyond a book or beyond a seminar who that person really was. So when social True. media and particularly streaming hit for a guy like me, like streaming yeah. was like, oh my God, man. Cause, cause I always wanted to be one of those guys. I, no, I'm, I'm, I'm humble enough to say, okay, those are really brilliant guys. If I ever was mentioned in the same uh, breath as them, that would be an, you know, a, a unbelievable compliment. But, yeah. Today I can reach more people in one week than 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 um, Napoleon Hill ever sold in books. Like last night, I did a stream that was uh, over a million people on this one stream. You know, so 
I can today be a not just a mentor, but but an uncle and a, a real role model to people, not just to see what I'm saying, but in my case, because I'm transparent and authentic and I and I've cleaned up my life and I don't have anything to hide. People can actually see yeah. behind the scenes, you know, like yeah. when it's not going well, what is the marriage really like? What's the rest of my life like? Some guys don't show all that. They, they're like, I'm just showing the business thing, the hustle. Or I'm just showing the the new product release. Uh, I have made a decision to show all the parts of my life, whether it's at the office, at my home. To me, I'm showing my life, not my business or not my advice. I'm showing my life. And those people that are attracted by that, um, you know, uh, uh, can say, hey, dude, I, 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 I want some of what this guy is saying. Because I'm learning. I'm learning. I'm not just sharing how to do something, but I'm always trying to learn myself and share what I'm learning in the moment. Well, you know, what we find is really refreshing and, and why we're really excited to read your book, Be Obsessed or Be Average. You know, we follow you on Snapchat. We, we have a look at your Facebook, your Instagram. And, you know, whenever you're putting up a snap or you're doing something on Facebook, whether you're at home or in the gym or at the office or going to a Kanye concert, a concert whatever it is, it's really refreshing to have someone as, as real as you who's been there, done that, got the T-shirt, got the wardrobe, who's able to come on and show people this is what it's really like. And, you know, like you said, you don't just get on when you're trying to promote something. You're on all the time. You're talking yeah. about all sorts of different things. You've got a range of different businesses. It's fantastic. It's really refreshing, I must say. Yeah, because I see, see I'm, I'm being influenced by everything that's happening every day, you know? Yeah. What, 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 what's going to happen today is going to be, you know, different than what happened in a seminar two years ago or, or, or even two months ago. So I'm being in – how am I responding how, how is the person that you're looking at or you're like uh, electing to get information from? You see, the problem with social media, the good news is I've shared, you know, that, that a, a guy could be a guy or gal could be anyone and have access to anyone. The bad news is you can have access to anyone. And so a guy can go on Instagram and post pictures of him being in Los Angeles with two Lamborghinis in his garage and he doesn't know either one of them. Or he can say, he can say, he can go post a picture saying, Hey, I own a house in Norway, but dude, like it's a picture of a house. Like, is that real? You could say you're worth $50 billion on the internet today. And people will actually say, Oh, he's, he calls himself the $50 billion man. And and, and so people think he's worth 50 billion, but doesn't mean it's true. So unless you can see, and people should be really, really beware right now, do your due diligence before you pick that guy or gal to follow and make sure they have everything you want, not just what you want to hear. Uh, because yeah. it's easy, probably the easiest it's ever been to pretend yeah. to trick someone. Unless, unless, of course, you're seeing all of it. Okay. And you're really paying attention to what's really happening here. And, and then um, obviously nobody's perfect. And there's some great guys, by the way. Let me just say there's some really, really talented people. Uh, men and women, even even young kids that 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 are worth following today on social media. But if, if your spigot is wide open, you're going to get a lot of dreck uh, yeah. come in there. And you know, um, uh, Grant, speaking about young kids, um, I, you know, I was going to ask you this question until later, but it, it seems relevant now. Speaking of young kids, um, I was watching one of your live posts the other day, and um, you've done something amazing. I mean, uh, you're trying to get this book of yours, be obsessed or be average into every school in America. Is that, is that sort of the vision that you've got for this? Yeah, uh, yeah, moving this, forward? this book right here is really about the, the, the story of my life. A lot of people don't know that, that I haven't always owned a jet and, and, um, and that, you know, yeah. life, life has not always been good for me. Um, I've, I've been, is as it true? You started at 25 years old. I mean, you're, you, you had a tough time up until about 25. Is that, is that about right? Dude, I had How did it start for you? From 10 years old to, to 25 years old was as bad as life can get for a person. Okay. Now yeah. I've never been shot. Somebody said today, no man, you've never been shot. I'm like, okay, okay. I've never been shot and killed. I've never been raped. I've never been thrown on the side of the road or out of the back of a truck or hung or, I mean, I guess, I guess there's people that have had it worse than me. No doubt about it. Okay. But I understand how low a person can go. And what you can do to a person physically is not necessarily as uh, degrading as how a person feels about themselves. Ultimately, Absolutely that's, agree. That, 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 that's what, what is going on for the individual, okay? Like, you could be yeah. sitting, you could be a princess in a castle 
if you don't feel good about yourself, then dude, that's kind of like torture. And, and, um, the individual knows the individual knows like whether they're living up to their full potential. In my case, I, I grew up in a middle-class family and I went down the chutes. I had a good upbringing. I had a good education. I had good parents. Nothing bad happened to me. I made some bad choices. And I went down the chutes. I didn't get arrested. I I don't have a record. I'm not a criminal. But in my mind, short of somebody putting locking me behind bars, dude, in my mind, I was locked in jail. In my mind, I had lost my self-respect. And I had. And and I was bankrupt spiritually, physically, emotionally, mentally, uh, in every way a person could be bankrupt, I was busted. And that went on from literally from 15 to 25 for 10 years every day. I hated myself. And then, and then yeah. for, for 10 years, I made it I, every day. I'm a change today. I'm a change today. I'm a change today for 10 years, for 365 days. And one day, one day it, 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 it worked. One day I started making a change and, and, um, was there something that happened that got you to make that change no, one, man, that one it was, day? It was, it was, it was, it was 10 years of failing. It was 10 years of, of letting myself down from saying, I'm going to change today. Uh, it helped that I quit using drugs, you know, but, but drugs weren't really the only problem. Okay. Now, if I look back, you know, really what happened was that I, I was, I have always been an obsessive little dude. I've always been a yeah. freaking high energy like, I could be introverted one moment and extroverted another moment, okay? So some people would say that's bipolar. I mean, yeah. today, if I, was, if I was 12 years old today, somebody would label me bipolar, ADD, ADHD, COPD, anything. They, they would find something wrong with me. By the way, they'd probably find something wrong with everyone watching this today. And yeah. the problem was, dude, I was like, I was being taught by society, parents, friends, teachers to suppress some of the yeah. things that I wanted. Like I've always wanted to be rich. I've always, always, yeah. I, I cannot remember not wanting to be rich. I've always yeah. wanted to be uh, famous. I've, I, I wanted attention. I wanted people to say, dude, that guy's awesome, man. I've wanted yeah. to be, I yeah. want people to like me. So I say these yeah. things cause they're true for me. Not because I'm like, like, like uh, I'm a braggart or something's wrong with me. Like some people can't even hear me say this. You know, it's interesting yeah. because I say, dude, I've always wanted to be rich. People have an opinion about that. I've always wanted to be yeah. famous. And they're like, I don't want to be famous. Well, you should want to be famous yeah. because the famous people are selling all the books. Okay. <laughs> the rich right. people yeah. are the ones that have choices. I've always wanted to be married to the hottest chick in the room. Always, man. Yeah. Ever since I saw my yeah. first James Bond movie, I'm like, that's the guy I want to be. The guy with the hot chicks. <laughs> okay. The guy that he walks yeah. into the casino, dude, he's got money. He wins his hands. Yeah. He's got the best yeah. equipment, the best cars, and he's got the hottest chick. I've always wanted all that. And when I told anybody that throughout my life, they told me, that was wrong. You were like, be satisfied with what you have. You have so much more than other people. You don't need all that. Like, like squelch it. Stop it. Okay. Counselor, psychologist, psychiatrist labeled me, put me on drugs, wanted to put me on Ritalin and Prozac. So anyway, the point of that story is I want to get this. This is the story of my life that when I finally started owning my obsessions, that I was yeah. one of these things, when I finally like, like embraced it and quit fighting it, Dude, my whole life turned around. Quit using drugs. I quit, I quit abusing myself. I quit taking advantage of situations. I quit taking advantage of me. Literally, I became so focused on getting the things I wanted that I didn't have time for the things that, that, that I didn't want and weren't good for me. So we're donating all the proceeds from the sale of the book. A buddy of mine just called me up. He owns ABC Mouse. You probably know it over there. ABC Mouse is a huge company, international. They're they're reteaching kids. He called me up and says, hey, I'm about 1,000 of your books because I heard what you're doing. So our goal is to get this in every school, not just in America, but even in your country. I'd love to get this book in schools. Mm -hmm. We think because of the covers got me on the uh, jet engine that a kid will be like, what? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, I mean, I do coaching with uh, kids at schools. And by the way, can I ask you, would it be possible to move that book a little bit uh, to your right-hand side? Um, yeah. Sorry, other, other way, other right. Sorry, okay. my bad. Just a little bit more. Yeah, there we go. Now we've got it in the screen there from our side. Beautiful. Just so this little frame of me doesn't block it. Thank you. Thank you very much. 
So um, I do some work with teenagers at schools as well. It's, it's just one of my hobbies, and, and I really enjoy coaching with kids. And, and they're hard, dude. It's hard them. to get their attention. If you've ever spoken to, to high school kids, I mean, you guys want to – you know, everybody watching, you should go talk to 10 or 12 or 15 or 50 high school kids. What yeah. are you going to talk to them about? Yeah. Can you connect That's with right. them? Can you get their attention? Can you get their head up out of their phone, out of their desk, up at you? Can you keep eye contact with them? Can you keep them interested? Because if you can't, look, yeah. man, it, th- this is a problem. This is, you know, I, th- I feel like I am a father. I have two kids. I'm a- but I think I'm a father to millions of people. That my obligation that with my energy and with my goals and my dreams, you know, for me to really be satisfied, I would have to father way more than two children. Yeah. Well, I think be obsessed to be average, but I mean, I'm certainly going to be introducing it to the schools that we do work with. Um, I do talks to, to groups of kids. I do one-on-one coaching with kids and it's just, it's amazing how many kids are labeled, whatever the label, I'm not going to, I'm not going to, yeah. you've already spilled out a lot of the labels. So many people and not just kids, by the way, for people watching adults as well. Totally. You know, things are not going well. You go see somebody, you get put into a box and, and you get taught to be average instead of be obsessed or yeah, be average. Yeah. So I, I hear so, you on so, that one. Yeah, dude, it's all over too. You, Cause you could just be called lazy. Okay. You could be called yeah. introverted. Those are labels. You could be, Oh, you're too extroverted. Okay. Oh, you're too loud. Yeah. Oh, you're too enthusiastic. Yeah. You're too depressed. Like, like it's almost yeah. like I can't do anything right. I'm a perfectionist. Yeah. I'm an overachiever. I'm an underachiever. The labels are extensive. It's not about the color of your skin. Now it's down to some personality disorder. Dude, we've gone below the skin, and now we're like, something's wrong with me no matter how I act or how I operate. I'm a control freak. Oh, I don't have any control. I'm a victim. (laughs) Okay? So so it's like it's almost a no-win situation for a lot of people, and it needs to stop. Why did you decide to write Be Obsessed or Be Average? Because this is my seventh book and people have been asking me, hey, man, what's we I want to know the story of your life. You know, I mean, who are you really? And and um, yeah, I do when I do interviews like this, people always say, hey, well, who are you before the plane? Who were you before the five companies? Who were you before the books? Well, I'm like, dude, I just like you. I, I'm still just like you. So um, this has been a, you know, I've always wanted to tell this story and I've always wanted to make a difference in, in the lives of kids and, and, and to say, and, and, and also for the company owners and the entrepreneurs that are being made wrong, you know, for the business owner that's trying to make his company work and you keep saying, dude, my people are not engaged. 70% of the American workers in America yeah. are disengaged. They hate their job by survey. They hate their job. So. So for that business owner that's like, man, I can't even get my employees to be interested. And then, yeah. they, the, and then the guy that runs the company is called a control freak. You know, well, dude, yeah. you should have control. I, do, I am a freak about control. I want control. You know, when I'm in my what plane is, and we're flying, I want control. I want the plane to stay in the air. Yeah. Right? <laughs> what, so, what advice would you give? You, you talk right now about the business owner who's getting a lot of slack. What advice would you give the business owner who is being told on a regular basis, you don't have enough work-life balance, uh, you're too controlling, you're, you're working too hard, you're working too much. What advice would you give somebody like that who came to you and the, wanted to read this the, book, the, Be Obsessed these, with the Average? What these advice are, would you give? These are, this is advice, you're taking advice from a quitter. You know, I never take advice from a quitter. So you show me somebody, you show me one person on planet Earth that, that has figured out the life balance thing. One, I, I only need one out of 7 billion people. You show me one person yeah. that has everything that I have, material, I'm talking material, and the marriage that I have, not material, and the relationship I have with my children, not material, and the sense of emotional and spiritual uh, contentment that I experience on a day-to-day basis. You show me one person that has all that together and did it by life balance. Okay, you can't show it, which means the life balance thing is bullshit. The whole thing is not true. See, why would I want to balance? Why would I want to balance a job, a marriage, my kids, time off when that's my life? Okay, it's my life. My, 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 My work is part of my life. My marriage is part of my life. The way I engage with other people, what I do every day, Facebook and Snapchat and YouTube. These are not things I need to find time for, man. They're they're 
they're, they're mediums for me to live my life. So people are like, how do you find time to write a book, dude? Dude, I made time. It's part of my life. You know, how do you find time for your wife? There's plenty of time for my wife. I, I, I am never, ever short on time with my wife. How do you find time for your kids? I don't, I don't think about it. You think about it more than I do. When I yeah. want to spend time with my kids, I make time for my kids. Now, that being said, if a person wants it all, it's going to cost money. Okay? Time is money. And time is more valuable than money. So people need to get their money right. The reason people don't have the, time, the life balance thing is they don't have their priorities correct. They're trying to get their life right, and they don't have their money right yet. You need money, man. Okay? So when I go buy this thing, which everybody told me was ridiculous and I shouldn't do. Yeah. Why would I exchange dollars for a jet? Because it allows me to spend more time with my wife and my kids. Okay. For those of you out there like, oh, I don't need all that. It's because you're selfish. See, you keep thinking about yourself. I don't need all that money. I don't need a jet. I don't need people to know me. Well, you're being selfish. I want everybody to consider, why are you thinking about yourself all the time? I say, get a jet, and the first thing you think of, I don't need that. Well, maybe I wasn't talking about you. Maybe that could help you raise money for your charity or your church or your schools or change the world or whatever your passion is. Maybe the jet's not for you. Maybe it's a better way for you to spend time, more quality time with your family. Maybe it's a way for you to homeschool your kids and get them to see other parts of the world. So those people in America, us ignorant, you know, you know Americans, Americans think that America is the only place on the planet. Sure. You know, okay. why? Because we never go anyplace. Yeah. So, so, you know, pe people should become less selfish and less self-centered and start thinking about, I think, I think the things that I'm obsessed with are actually good for the whole world, not just for me. Absolutely. Well, if we had more people obsessed with uh, stuff you're talking about and what you talk about in your book, Be Obsessed or Be Average, if we had more people being obsessed about these kinds of things and less obsessed about watching what's going on in the news all the time about how, how you know, depressing the world always is, I think we might live in a different, a different do, do place. You, you bring up so a great point. I actually talk about this in the book. If the entire, if 7 billion people today were obsessed with their purpose, totally obsessed with their purpose, you're talking about today, drugs would stop, wars would stop, okay? Crime would stop. Everything bad would stop. Why? Because I would be obsessed with my purpose and, and your purpose. Your purpose can't be evil. Okay, it's just not your real purpose is never going to be to be evil. I mean, I guess there's a small population, some tiny, tiny, tiny Hitler part of the population. But for the most part, yeah. you're going to have seven billion people with, with, with a couple, you know, maybe, I don't know, 70 million wackos. You're going to have seven billion yeah. people that are so focused on and obsessed with completely all in with. Hey, man, I'm going to take care of myself. I'm going to take care of my family. I'm going to take care of my church. I'm going to take care of my community. There won't be litter on the streets. I mean, you're talking about the world could be literally like overnight going to this golden age. Absolutely. Totally agree with that. Speaking of which, um, I've got to ask you, I mean, you were talking about time and, and controlling time. Uh, I was listening to you and, and I think it was Jared on Young Hustlers a few days ago, and you were talking about the difference between managing time and controlling time. You don't want to manage your time. You want to learn how to create and control your time. Yeah, look, there, there, there comes a point when I got to manage time. So I know I got a, I got a show I'm doing at 12 o'clock today in a few minutes, right? So I got to think about, yeah. okay, I'm going to be doing that. But I don't really think about what I'm doing next yet. Like, like I, just, yeah. I just slam a lot of stuff in. It's like, it's like I'm making salami or sausage. Like I'm slamming as much meat as I can in this space of time. So, yeah. um, look, I... I I, I get a lot done every day. I, I don't know how I get a lot done. I know this. I feel better when I get a lot done. I, I was speaking to 700 real estate agents yesterday. I said, look, I don't, I don't exactly know how it works. I just know this. And I know nobody in the room yeah. is going to disagree with what I'm about to say. Yeah. If you want something done, give it to the busiest person. Yeah. If you want yeah. something done today, give it to the person that has the most going on because they always get stuff done. If you, yeah. want it, if you don't want it done today, give it to the person that has the least amount going on. Yeah. So there's something that busy people do that the unbusy can't do. Yeah. So I've got, I know you're in a hurry and we're slightly going over time here. I've got two, two last questions about the book. 
The one question very quickly is what advice would you give anybody that's being told at the moment by someone in their life, you cannot succeed, you cannot do it, whether they're 16 years old or 36 years old, what would be your, your key takeaway that yeah, maybe is brought up in the not, book? What advice is, would you give? Yeah, this is my, my takeaway would be they're not talking to you, they're talking to themselves. Wow, okay. that's powerful. The, the, most, most of the advice you get, the person is talking to themselves, not to you. You can't do that is your mother saying, I couldn't do it. And I'm still yeah. trying to make sense of why I did. You, 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 you know, my mom told me not to pursue the woman I'm married to. She's like, look, man, she, she, she doesn't, it takes two. My mom yeah. was talking about herself. She wasn't talking to me. Yeah. You know, a uh, guy tells me, he's like, you shouldn't, you shouldn't go into this business you're thinking about doing. He, I, I, I wanted to buy real estate. Oh, man, man, real estate's a problem, dude. Real estate's a big problem. I'm like, really, dude, when'd you quit on it? <laughs> so, so, you know, people give advice. Most advice is given. Could be good. Most of it's not. It's given from someone that quit on something. You can't do that. You yeah. shouldn't think that big. You can't get there. Uh, if you go big, big is not always better. All the stuff we've always heard. Dude. Don't get too much attention. Fly under the radar. Don't get rich. Yeah. Who says that to yeah. people, man? Don't get rich. Yeah. You don't need all that, okay? I'm going to yeah. love you just the way you are, little Bobby. You don't need to change. <laughs> There's no reason, no reason, little Tony, that you should change. I love you just the way you are, okay? Yeah. Well, dude, if I listened yeah. to my grandmother, I'd still be four foot tall. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, listen, I, I don't know how you guys have done it, but you guys are, well, I do know how you've done it. I mean, the book is already selling out and the pre-orders are going crazy. For all you guys watching today, get out there and buy your book, okay? You can get it. We're putting all the links at the bottom of this interview. Go and buy. Be obsessed and be average. And don't just buy one copy. Buy it for yourself. Buy it for people you love. Just buy it for anybody you know that is going through something. And trust me, there are a lot of you. Um, I'd like to thank Mr. Cardone for joining us on 5 Cents Daily. Yeah. Let me, let me just say this. If they send me a receipt that they purchased, and yeah. I know shipping over there is a big deal, right? So I don't know what it costs to ship, but... This is what I will do for anybody in South Africa that wants to take advantage of this, okay? If you're willing to get the book, one, one book's enough, okay? Pre-order the book. If you send me a uh, receipt that you purchased the book, send it to obsessed at grantcardone.com, obsessed at grantcardone.com. I'll make you part of a 13-week coaching program where I'm going to actually go over each chapter with the people that pre-order the book so and guys can i just can i just make the people watching with you in south africa or from around the world just understand what kind of crazy value you're getting here for the price of a book okay for the price of a, a powerful book you're also getting 13 mastermind sessions with mr grant cardone yeah not not one of my people me. anthony it's not one of my people I, i'll be running it'll pro they'll probably be 30 minutes long and and um yeah. So you figure that's going to cost you like two bucks, uh, two bucks, uh, and the book's free. However you want to figure it. But I, I, and then the the second thing I would ask you to do is when you do get the book, pre-order it. I'll make you part of the mastermind. When you do get the book, write a review on it. That's all I ask you to do. Write a review. I never do that. I just buy somebody else a book because I like to keep my books. So Anthony, thanks, man. Thanks for having me today. I appreciate it. I really appreciate you being on Five Cents Daily, and good luck with everything else. We look forward to following up and staying in touch. Thank you, buddy. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot.